go ahead and start with number five. Moving down. Okay. <clears throat> Even though I've been offered a position that offers 15% increased salary, I would not accept this position. Because one of the reasons is because you are required to sign a code of conduct which tells you that you're supposed to contribute to an organization listed. So first of all, you don't get to choose your organization. You don't know what your responsibilities are, your tasks, or expectation in this job. So those are some of the reasons why I would. Okay, thank you. Number four. Um, after being offered the new position where my salary would increase by the 15%, um, I would accept the job offer only in, only if I'm able to donate 1% to the charity of my choice. Um, even though I'm not very fond of it, either way, whether you know, you're signing a contract with this employer or anybody else, you're still, with any job you take, you're still <coughs> basically having to quote unquote donate or give some of your money to the government. So at least this way you're, you have somewhat of a say on what your money, where your money is going. Thank you. And number three. Um, okay. First, I would like to express my dislike for the fact that I am not only being regulated to contribute a percent of my salary to a charitable organization, but that it is an, an organization of my choosing. However, because it is a significant pay raise, I would accept the job and agree to contribute one percent of my salary. Whether or not I choose to give more will be of my own accord. An employer should not be able to force an employee to donate. It is unethical and frankly borderline discriminatory. However, for the sake of the scenario, I chose to donate to the Arts, Cultures, and Humanities program. Investment in the arts and cultural resources can benefit local and state economies by supporting job growth, stimulating commerce, and sustaining neighborhoods by stabilizing property values. The arts have long served as a reminder of the beauty of humanity and serve an important resource to students across the United States. Thank you. Number two? Uh, yes, I would take this offer and I contribute at least 10% at least of my salary. Sometimes as individuals, we tend to forget that we, it's, a, it's, our, it's important for us to contribute. Sometimes our employees has to force us to contribute because people tend to forget that we're living in a society where we need to be active in what, where we're living and how we contribute to this environment or to society. And as such, I mean, I see a charity here that I'm very much interested in, and that's in the environment. And yes, I don't have a problem contributing or being forced to contribute a percentage of my salary to this. Thank you, and number one? In my case, I would take the job offering. However, um, I would <coughs> not, I, I don't like the idea of being forced with the 15% um, donating. Um, I think I, if I were to donate, it would be whatever I would want to donate at the time, and it's not something that I would have to do yearly or monthly, you have to donate this percent or whatever percent of my salary, I think it should come from what I want to donate at that point in time. Obviously, we have um, economical issues, maybe some, like during a period in, of the year, I'll have more money than, than in a certain time, and I would donate more during that time. And I do agree with um, the fact that, yeah, we should donate because there's people in need, and the charity I chose was a health charity because there's there's people out there in need who need, um, like, if you're part of a charity, okay, you're helping them out, and like, let's say for health, um, the, the the people of the Cancer Institute or something like that, you would have them, um, like you can save a mother of somebody, you can save a father, you can save a friend, you can save somebody who really needs it. So I, I, would, I would donate. As number one stated, um, She's I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Number five. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she looked at it as being forced, compelled to do something. But as individuals, sometimes probably we need to be forced to do something. Most of us, we just go out, we make all this money, and we forget that there are actually people that are in need. Our society needs to be taken care of. We just forget about the simpler things. So probably as individuals, we need to be given that extra push at times and say, hey, you need to do this because we tend to forget. Um, I think in theory, that's a really nice concept that as humans, as humanity, we need to contribute mm -hmm. to each other. But this is a legally binding contract that you will be forced to donate. And I'm not sure that's completely ethical that your employer is basically offering you a job on the basis that you are donating. This um, donation should 
definitely be something that you give because you want to, not because you're being strong-armed into it. So I have like a little bit of trouble with the term force that you've used and that push. The push should be coming from within, not from not the employer. But what I'm trying to say is um, sometimes as individuals, we just let it go. We don't, it's like, okay, we're making this so much money. And as I, I use a push or force might be a little bit too strong. But what about if we're, you know, like slightly tugged or in the right <laughs> direction, you know, just to help out. I don't see, I mean, sometimes we as individuals need to be strong-armed or somebody needs to, hey, you need to do something, wake up. But know. everyone's different. What if one person has a strong sense of responsibility right. while another person doesn't? One person might go out like every day and go help out somebody in their community while another person just watch TV or stuff. So you're not supposed to just force everybody. Mm -hmm. I think everybody should have their own choice because it does come from within. And it's all ethical decisions. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I just I don't know if the employer is the person that should be pushing you to make that contribution. Okay. I, I don't know if that's the correct person. I mean, what kind of donation are they giving? If their pay grade is double what mine is and I have a raise, are they donating double what I give? Are they giving 1%? Because my 1% and their 1% from their salary are going to be significant donations. So who who sets who sets the numbers for that, I mean? <laughs> I'm not so much concerned with what they are doing. I'm concerned about me, my impact on what I'll be doing. So if if their pay grade is much higher, obviously it is. I'm not concerned with that. I know I'm doing something that's worthwhile. I'm doing something that's going to have an impact on someone or something. So that's then how I feel about it. It's like what she says. If they're making a lot more money, so then what they're supposed to contribute is going to be a lot more than what you're going to contribute. So it's going to make a bigger impact than just one person who's going to donate 1% company-wise. You're going to make more. But don't you think you can donate more with your time than you can with your money? I mean... You can help out just, you know, as as good as with your time than you are with your money. Oh, yeah. I guess true. it's an individual that's choice. That's true. Yeah. 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 So why am I being forced to, you know, donate, quote unquote, let's say 1% of my salary if I'm going out to, you know, a charity, you know, four times a month donating my time and I still have to donate my money on top of that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm yeah. It it really doesn't it's balance true. out. I guess it doesn't mm -hmm. to a personal issue. For me personally, I really don't. Ha I don't have a problem with it. Donate money and time. If it's for the good cause, I'll do it. I don't have a problem with that doing it. For me, it doesn't really matter. What about economical issues? What about if you're tight with money? Tight with money? <laughs> well, then I might have tight to. is money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you're tight with money. Tight, like, with, money. Oh, tight with money. Yeah, yeah, like what about if one year you don't want to donate? What are you going to do? Well, and you're signed into a contract. What do you do then? You well, that's eat, something I have to you think don't about. Need to donate? You have a point there as well. That's something I have to think about. But, I mean, I'm not going to set a limit of in terms of percent where I know I'm not able to budget myself yeah. in a sense. I'm going to look at something that I can handle, I can, that won't impact my finances. Mm -hmm. like that. Plus, the scenario never really gives you what your base salary is. So what if your base salary is <laughs> $15,000 a year and your increase is 15%? Well, you're not really increasing much. Yeah. So what if you're just not, you know, able to donate, let's say, 10% of your salary when you're only making, you know, fifteen, eighteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Plus, I like what you brought up about going to donate. I mean, actually going and volunteering. Like, mm -hmm. is this donation, like, negotiable? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. if my time is worth, you know, by doing a walk once a month, am I, you know, having the same effect on this charity that somebody financially is having? Like, maybe yes, maybe mm -hmm. no. Like, it's very... Let's think normally for a walk, you yeah, have to donate. Yeah, that donation can be very, like, it's too tricky. open, yeah. There's too many loopholes, and how many other requirements are going to come from this job now? Now that you've agreed to donate, like, where does the line draw? Where's Not even that. Is it 1% a month? Is it 1%, you know, bi-weekly? Is it 1% mm -hmm. a year? Annually. Wait, yeah. but not only that. We're donating this money. Where is it going? How do you know who's, who exactly. it's helping? You're not seeing the person. You're not giving it to them personally. Hey, I'm going to help you with this. So how do you know if it's really going for a good cause or not? For all you know, it's going to the employer and he does what he wants with it. He donates it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To his donation fund. Yeah. That's true. And I think another issue we brought up is that you can't choose what charity it goes to. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it gave you, like, this general topic, but, you know, the religious one, what if you chose to instead donate to a temple or a mosque? I mean, your employer has regulated you to these certain 
um, organizations, and that's not necessarily fair if that's where you want to contribute. As number three pointed out earlier, um, <laughs> 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 in terms of um, who is actually getting the money, uh, I'm sure there can be some accountability in terms of that. Maybe we can do some research, background research. Maybe we can ask him to provide some information as to who will be getting, you know, financial statement, where is this money going, who is getting it, can I see a breakdown, how is it distributed, all of that, just to cover ourselves. Or mm -hmm. but back, back to that, though. Like, if I were to donate to somebody who's in need, like, I would want to see them, like, for example, somebody in um, in who's in poverty and they don't have shoes, I would like to give them personally a pair of shoes. Then, oh, here, I'm going to give it to a charity and they have to get money from a charity. I would personally, like, oh, I got this for you. And if, like, it's a sense of fulfillment on top of everything. So. I think maybe an alternative would be having your employees participate in some kind of walk. So if your company is you know, the ING walk, like Atlanta has their the huge marathon run, ING, Bank of America, all these companies um, participate. I think maybe that would be an alternative maybe employees would be more comfortable with. I think I'd be more comfortable knowing and seeing where my money is going, i.e. one of the charities that she just stated instead of just writing a check and saying, oh, well, I hope it gets to you, you know, good luck. <laughs> You know, I think I'd rather see it. I think I'd rather personally help out, you know, whether it be, you know, with, I know State Farm does a Special Olympics, you know, so donating to that, you know, I know where my money is going there because I can see it instead of just writing a check and hoping for the best. I would rather go out and find my own charity to give it to. Mm -hmm. So instead of them giving me a list, I would go to the local church or even my church and give it to people that really need it. Somebody that is on a more personal basis. So I briefly stated before that I chose to donate to the Arts, Culture, Humanities, which is the Met organization. Um, just overall, I feel that the arts is always a community that takes the hardest hit when there is any kind of a recession. But we benefit so much, I mean socially, economically, from having these arts within our neighborhoods that I really just felt that's where the money would be best spent. I mean, this is for museums art festivals, um, different things that come to different cities. And even though the Met is located in New York and it seems like most of the funding would be going there, they also branch out, have multiple pro programs across different states. So I just felt most comfortable. I didn't like the idea of like a religious affiliation, especially this is your place of employment. I, I'm like very uncomfortable with that. Um, international charities, there's just a very low um, efficiency I think with these charities it is really hard to see where your money is going and um, yeah I just on a personal level I just felt the arts was most important that is where I'm going to see my community flourish that's where I'm going to see the benefits as much as I agree with number three I think without your health you have nothing so if you're you know lying in a bed dying with cancer you really can't appreciate the arts and the museums and everything else so even though it is important, I would probably feel most comfortable donating to health because if you're not healthy, if you don't have your health, you really don't have anything. I chose the environment. I mean, I do agree with you, number three and number two, about the environment. This is our home. This is where we live, breathe. This is where we raise our children. I look at the environment as a habitat. We are all dependent on each other. I agree with the arts. Yes, we do need that extra <laughs> you know, luxury. Luxuries. <laughs> Health is important as well. It ties in with the environment yeah. as well. So I, I chose the environment because, I mean, we take for granted as to how we interact with things around us. The common things are garbage, how we dispose of it. Mm -hmm. Even the common phones that we use, uh, do we know how it's made, where it's coming from? All of that is tied into the environment and that's... I chose that because I feel strongly about the environment. I agree with number two and four because it, it's true the environment does tie into our health and if our environment's all dirty and, some, and stuff, we can actually get sick from it. You never know what causes cancer. You never know the, the real cause of it. And um, we, we have to prevent it and we have to clean our environment and our health is number one. And I would, I would donate to the health charity. So I would charity donate interest. to the religious. Because if you go to like any church, there's different type of people 
people from low economic status, people who are in the hospital sick. So every different thing is like related just back to people. And if you help these people in the churches, they can be the one to go out and help the environment or even donate to the arts and different things. So everything is like interrelated. So we're not all wrong then, I mean, in terms of we're linked together in terms of whichever charity we choose because we're all dependent on each other. So I guess we're tied in, whichever one we choose to donate to. Mm -hmm. I think whatever charity you really choose, some which way, mm -hmm. those charities are somehow giving their time or giving some of their money to somebody else in some which way. So it pretty much it's, it's going around either way. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I, I think... Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I think it's just... It's not the argument or our issue is not which charity to support because I think we all feel comfortable donating to a charity. It's just should you have to donate on the basis of your job? I think that's where most of us are finding like a sh internal struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I understand. <laughs> Another issue is why does it have to be one charity? Why can't you donate to several charities, not just one? Like you choose as you go, not just, oh, I'm zeroed in on health. You know, what if I want to donate to the arts too? Yeah, I agree with that, but if you feel passionate about something, me personally, I'm passionate about the environment, so that's what I'm going to focus on. I mean, it, whatever, if you're passionate about anything, that's up to you, your choices. You know, but I feel passionate about the environment. So. We can help out everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, the environment is tied into just about everything, health, the arts. What about if you have a family member who's sick? You're going to want to donate? To the health. To the health. So then again, it's based on personal reasons. Personal. What, about if, what about if one of your children grows up and they love art? You're going to want to donate to art. <laughs> again, personal reasons. Based on as personal long as reasons. you donate, that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. Contribute. Right. As long as it's your choice to yeah. donate yeah. and contribute. For me personally, I probably would start a, in my community, look what's needed in terms of a park. I would probably volunteer, get a group of children or kids, or even my own family go around to my um, different local supermarkets or hardware, you know, just to get these, because I'm very passionate about the environment. So I might do something with, the, with a park that's in need of beautification, something like that, and work towards that with my family. Um, we're also all students um, in the School of Ed here at Miami-Dade, and there are multiple programs and um, events that the school will put on that we're able to volunteer. So, for example, April 5th, we have Day of the Young Child at the Homestead Campus, and we're educating, um, it just so happens we're educating on healthy eating and the environment and planting vegetables, self-sustaining, um, and as uh, you can either choose to donate your time and go there, volunteer, work with the kids, do the arts projects, or you can come and donate um, materials or even looking for farmers and you know, self-sustaining gardeners around uh, Miami-Dade County to come and donate their produce so we can introduce kids to different types of vegetables. What do you do when you go shopping? All these different things. So there are events that incorporate all of these organizations that we feel passionate about. It's just finding them and giving your time. And there are the opportunities. Are there other alternatives that you guys might be that you guys have thought of or mentioned before? The only alternative I see right now is giving time as opposed to money. That's and for this one, you're not limited to the organization once again. And you could go out and find different ones, as you've said. Mm -hmm. yeah, Back to the time topic and the environment also tying into that. It's like you can just actually just go to the beach and start picking up the shore. Mm -hmm. Start picking up garbage. Mm -hmm. You know, that helps. Everything helps. And you don't have to donate money. Who are you going to donate money to? You're, doing, you're putting in your time. You don't have to pay anybody to do it. Mm -hmm. I think there's stuff that we do just in our regular lives that we're, you know, somehow contributing to some charity, I think, without us even knowing it. Like, number one said, going to the beach and picking up trash. You know, that could be normal to somebody, and you don't feel like you're going out of your way, you know, to help, you know, out of charity or help out the environment or helping anything out. Yeah. yeah, and there are different shelters there are that hold, you know, um, food, uh, collecting food, food drives, animal shelters, um, 
even donating a goodwill, goodwill like not only provides jobs for you know people with special needs, but those in need, you can just go shopping, you can donate your clothes. I mean, there are small everyday things that we don't think would make an impact, but you do it big anyway. picture you are, and yeah, it should. I guess it's just something you really have to just make a little bit of the effort to realize it will make a difference. It's easy to kind of forget. We need that push. But you can without it being part of your job and without it being a huge financial issue. There are small ways that will make an impact. Do any of you have any closing comments or remarks that you'd like to make? I suppose it was a good idea to try to enforce or encourage others to contribute to an organization by forcing them. I guess that's one way of doing it, but there are other ways also. I do agree. Um, I, do ag <laughs> I do agree, yes, but sometimes we just have to be, you know, as individuals, we tend to forget. We tend to say, we just live in our own little world, so maybe we do need that extra push, that extra you know, tug, hey, wake up, we need your help here, and that might be financially, or, you know, sometimes we, we do need it. As individuals, we do tend to forget, so take things for granted. Mm. I think bottom line, this won't work, I think, out <laughs> in <the> society, <laughs> in the real world, because as much as, hey, I would love to, you know, make 15%, you know, more of what I'm making in my salary, I don't want to be forced to have to donate you know, so I think in and I think in a lot of cases, um, people are gonna turn it down because they don't want to be forced to spend their money on what they don't have to spend their money on. Mm -hmm. So, but what if you're making a wordy? What if you're contributing to something? I mean, I don't want to look at this being forced. I, probably that's a, a strong word. Maybe there's a little bit too strong. There's a body <laughs> contract. You're forced. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, probably, like I said, some of us as individuals, we just go about our daily lives and do whatever. But maybe we need that extra push. That probably we need, yeah, we probably some of us do need that force. Yeah, maybe, maybe we only do. some of us, not all. Yeah, some. Yeah. yeah. I some think of it us. works out more when it's one, like one's will. Like, you know, during like hurricanes, I think it's a Red Cross, and you see they start putting the commercials and you want to donate money. So you, they come up with all this money, and people just volunteer and they just give their money. And if they need a help, they help clean up and they do stuff. But I don't think it should be part of a job, like sign here, print and sign, and you have to do this. I don't have to do anything. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely should have the right to choose whether you want to donate or not. And I do, it is lovely to think that we need to push people to do it mm -hmm. and it should come of our own accord. But, I mean, this is not okay that you can only get a job because you're agreeing to donate a portion of your salary. It's just, where does the line, where does the line draw? How much can your employer request of you? in order to accept that job. When you think about it, are they getting something back from those organizations or those charities? Are they getting something out of it? Why is it those six, I think it's six charities, why is it only those six? Why don't we have the option to choose from something else? Not even that, do we know if they're donating and how much they're donating? Because obviously they're making a significant amount more you know, than we are. Mm -hmm. So how do we know they're donating? Why do I have to donate my you know, small salary but you're making this huge salary and you don't have to donate anything? Mm -hmm. I guess the issue I have with all this is when we start looking at who's getting, who's donating watch or who's doing watch, or I just, that's just for me personally. I don't really care about if you're donating 10,000, 20, as long as I'm doing my part. I don't really care what you're doing, but at the same time, I do need to see accountability. I need to see where the money's been spent, who's getting the money. I do agree with all of that. But I'm not going to look at, oh, you're donating 10,000 and I'm probably not donating anything. I'm not going to look at that. Once I'm making a contribution, that's, that's just my. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But once again, this comes back to it, it, it's part of your job. So I mean, I, I get it. It's beautiful. Like I get it. But no, it should not be a, a requisite to accept the job. Definitely, definitely okay. not. You have the right to choose whether or not to donate. And um, yeah, it is a probably a more selfish outlook on it. Mm -hmm. We definitely, as humanity, should be. Uh, donating, supporting all these charities more, but but we're not. But it is not the employer's uh, responsibility 
civic duty to make yeah, sure we donate. It, it, to make sure I'm fulfilling my civic duty. Like, what's, what's so wrong with that? What if someone tells you? It should be you your own responsibility. Yeah. Well, you're not doing it. You're How not, do you know a But it's not, not my employee's it. responsibility to make it. sure I am. But what do you consider doing it? There's a different way to consider yourself helping the community. But so if you employ? think you're not doing it, maybe you should be forced to, but not all. <laughs> <laughs> it's just who is the employer to say like that you need to be doing making these donations? It's ooh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. uh, number two. <laughs> like, what does it matter what I do with my money? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm outnumbered. I'm outnumbered. No, no, no. <laughs> we totally support you, but not from the employers. Like. <laughs> they do not have that right. <laughs> but don't we kind of somehow already, I don't want to use the word donate, but kind of contribute to society, let's say, with, you know, the taxes and Social Security and everything that comes out of our paychecks already? Like, where do you think that goes? Mm -hmm. That goes to everybody. That goes to society. That goes to, you Got know, people programs. in need. That goes to, you know, the roads and everything else. So essentially, I'm already contributing. Why do I have to contribute more now? Because you're, you're passionate about a, a certain um, charity, it could be. But I'm passionate about helping people, and I'm helping people when my money goes to the toll roads and it's helping me <laughs> drive, you know, from Homestead to Kendall. Oh, well, hey, I helped you out. I helped myself out as well, but, you know, or people who, let's say, you know, financial aid, you know. You're passionate about Some of my money. I, mean, I guess, but I guess when the government takes that money from you, you're kind of donating to everybody? Mm -hmm. Kind of, yeah. somewhat? <laughs> Yeah. So.